are here in Vitavu, Wyoming to climb off with cracks for a month. Bouldering, rope climbing, although everything here is basically a boulder anyway because it's like 25 feet long. I really like the style, I really like placing big cams and I've come to Vitavu to do more of it. What the fuck am I doing here? I have quite an ambitious list of projects for this month. I only have two because the VU is hard and I might only send two. Spatial relations. Here to get my ass whooped, basically. Bad girl's dream. Ugh. I'm here to try hard stuff. <laughs> you! Jihad. This is a pain in the ass root. My main goal, the one that I'm most excited about, is Big Pink. Fucking shit. And then Whipping Boy. Ah! Mary and I are gonna be here for a month climbing some of the hardest, nastiest offwits in Vitavu. Actually, Mary is gonna climb the hardest, nastiest offwits in Vitavu, and I'm gonna project Big Pink for a month. The climbing in Vitavu, I think, is particularly unique. Grades are just kind of up here. The climbing out here is so hard. The crystals are much larger and much less forgiving. It's, it's very few wins and a lot of failure. It's like flat all around, and then all of a sudden there's just these like piles of rocks all over. It's, it's whimsical, it's painful, it challenges you in a way that I don't think other places like it do. Big Pink has been on my list for about a year. I think of it as like the partner climb to Worm Drive. I was here a year ago and I projected Worm Drive for a couple weeks. And when I sent it, it felt like very affirming that it was like, I can climb hard off with. Coming back to Vitavu, Big Pink was high up on my list. I don't love it. I went up to it the first day that we were out here and I kind of flailed. Keep me tight, Mike. Just keep me really tight, Mike. This is the most desperate thing I've ever done. Oh, I can take. Ah! Yeah, if you had big fists, this would be sick. I have tiny hands, and I'm not as strong as Mary. I can't armbar for that long. Yeah, I think I gotta go right side. I decided to completely flip everything around and go right side in, and just get like the most shittiest, tightest chicken wings that I could imagine. Ooh, it's big. It's big and it's pink. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Do it again. With style. <laughs> you did it with style, you look pretty. I did all the moves, <laughs> that's good. And then I came back and tried it. Uh, it did not go well, my shoes were falling apart. Whoa, oh, falling, falling. Oh, yeah, that's, I was just going to a chicken wing there. Kaya is, she's a very unique person. Okay, man. The top part doesn't feel so bad. I can just do that. A little bit, it's fucking done. It's very much like improv, it's like yes and. That cracks is a bitch. Good job, dude. Fuck me. It's not a bitch, you're a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And then I rested for about an hour and went back to it. I just thought like, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna do my best. Like, I'm just like, I'm just gonna fucking go for it. Like, you can go hands free. Yeah. You just have to like, really commit to the karate kicks and that like bottom heel toe to press on it. There's one section where I get like a really bad chicken wing and my feet are really bad and I had to just like press up and I started slipping out and I just like made the decision I'm not gonna give up. Like I'm slipping but I'm gonna keep trying. She's doing the tightest chicken wing she could do and screaming and we're just getting hyped. Come on! Come on, Kyle! I like walked my foot up a little higher and it was like the hardest thing I've ever done. Nice, come on. Dig deep, ah! deep Go Kaya! Come on! And then I got through that crux. I was like, fuck, okay, I did that part. Don't give up now. Dude, she's fucking got it. That was so rad, dude. Oh my God, her screams. Rad. And finally getting to the chains, like it felt really good. Holy fuck. Yeah, dude! <laughs> Ah! <laughs> I could feel her like deciding to try harder, like and deciding to not quit, like every time she power grunted. It was so cool. Uh. 
<laughs> Fucking hell, guys. <laughs> Dude, I'm crying a little bit. <laughs> So I, I started crying when you got to the top two. <laughs> I was like, I just, yeah, I cried a lot at the top. I was like, oh, fuck. Like, yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know. I feel It's like very validating because it feels like I'm actually good at this. You know? So, yeah, I'm like actually good at this. Off with climbing. <laughs> okay. Um, if I was to describe off with, I would say that it is. It's just like so absolutely absurd that it, it is. It's a really good time. I think the easiest way to describe it is finding a crack that is fist width and bigger, and trying to figure out every single way you can to either move up the crack or stay in the crack. So you have to learn how to stay in cracks and pray to whoever that you don't slip out or that you can move up and you don't get a rest unless you lock in your body. Putting elbows in, you gotta like double hand stack, you gotta put your knee in, you gotta put your calf in, sometimes you even put your head in. Every inch is a mile and every tiny little bump is one step closer to the anchors and it's just, it's a goddamn wrestle. <laughs> Where are we going? Where are we going? Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Bad girl's dream. Yeah. <laughs> Bad girl's dream. I was really nervous and there was like a bunch of our friends sitting at the base watching and I got a bit of performance anxiety. I also wore a knee pad because my knee um, got messed up. go I got my knee stuck and then I like yanked it out and it was just like pulling skin off. I'm like doing butterflies and shitty calf log and then I shove a knee in already to my like like skinned knee and I go ah! Take here. I got you. Ow, take please. I'm sitting on you Mary. Yeah. Mary your legs on the rope. No this is not awesome. Mary here. Mary. My knee's stuck. Mary do you want to tie in? Alright, got it. <laughs> Any more vibes. Didn't do so good, cleaned it, came down. I'm excited to give it another go. All the skin is rubbed off. So I gotta tape it. So I'm gonna do this again today. I'm bleeding through the tape. I'm wearing band-aids under that too. <laughs> and I took the knee pad off, taped my wound on my knee. It hurt so bad up there, that's why I got pissed. I think people underestimate Mary a lot because she's small. And I think that people look at how she climbs and say like, it's, like, it's easy for her because she's smaller. Mary has spent 10 years climbing and perfecting her skills. She's put in her 10,000 hours. We're cozy up here. <laughs> uh, we're bad girls. I sent it my second go about maybe half hour later. All right, Mike, you can take. Look, I bled through the tape. <laughs> you see that? This bleed. Felt good. Yeah, hard, but really good. She might be one of the best, in fact, she is one of the best female off with climbers in the world right now. was going out to try Bad Girl's Dream. It's like right next to Glorious Fantasy. It's this wide sexist crack that goes up for a long time. It has like an overhanging bulge. It's really fucking hard. <clears throat> Last season, I tried it probably like four or five times and every single time I was just like, I, I, it's impossible. I'm gonna get revenge on this route. It felt like an easier big paint. Like it was the same exact size. a little bit wider than Big Pink so I could get better chicken wings in. She's fucking strong. just 
walked up to it and sent it. First go, first try. So that's how you really feel. Oh, this car. Couldn't be my ass. But it felt like redemption to be like, I got it. Like, I got it. Do I think that women have an advantage or a disadvantage in off white thing? I pondered about this quite a lot. I think I, I would tend to default to the answer that every crack has its technique and it has its size. And so for the greater degree, I think it's about even, in my opinion, across men and women when they do off wits albeit that of course like all cracks certain sizes are going to suit certain body sizes so for example if you've got someone who's bigger and can't get a hip in and can't get a shoulder in but then you've got someone who's tiny and can get the whole body in that becomes a chimney then that's going to be better but that same person may have a much smaller body size or smaller span and can't reach as far back in really flared cracks to so the fists of the back maybe for example so I would say it's pretty darn fair across it, but I mean, that comes from my opinion as a coach and a guy. I mean, I haven't had the chance to be a woman in life. Jihad, I didn't really get to give it a real go. I went up there with the wrong gear. I thought Jihad was a character building experience. I think it had been a second since people had climbed Jihad. It's just filled with pack rat nests. I couldn't finish the climb with all that stuff in the way. Like you couldn't jam because of all the all the stuff. It's a bird's nest um, with no gear. <laughs> it was fucking gross. Well, I just went into aid mode. I cleaned out the last big pack rat nest. Without warning, Mary decides to start scooping pack rat nest and shit all down on top of us. It's raining shit. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Sorry guys. Danny said you're bringing a single rack. He's like, because you bumped the seven for a ways. I would bring one seven, two sixes and two fives. And then the red, the point five. And then he did save my ass with the tiny ears. A little bit of the slack there, Mike. And Sadie followed it and cleaned it out some more. I can't wait to go back and actually like get to do it myself. This is a pain in the ass route. Whipping Boy is my current project. I'm not as sendy as Mary, so it takes me a little bit longer to send things. You know, Whipping Boy is fucking hard. Yeah! Oh, fuck. Come on! Fuck. Oh! Fuck. Just kind of scary. First little bit was really cool. It was a really nice warm up to the fucking heinous crux. I finally kind of figured that part out. Dear Lord Satan, please allow Kaya to send. Right now, that would be great. That felt really good. I top roped it that day and I sent it clean on top rope. I actually was originally not going to do it and Kaya one last time she says, are you sure you don't want to do it? And I was like, fuck, fuck, okay fine, I'll fucking do it. It's just like a really gnarly chicken wing with the right until I can get above the constriction and turn around and go into this like really shitty fists pod. I have all the beta down, I know what I need to do. It's just a matter of like doing it. Yeah, that thing's brutal. I mean, I kind of came into VW thinking I was like a 5'12", like sport climber and that I could like pretty much do all the 5'11s. I taught Sam how to trad climb last fall. I've never seen anyone so naturally talented at rock climbing before. VW was like, no, you're not actually even a 5'9 climber. Like maybe you're a 5'9 climber, you're not a 5'10 climber. And I'm like, okay, that's what I'm fighting for. And she wants it so very badly. She made me like rest and she made me sit down and like do like a breathing thing for 10 minutes, like take deep breaths, which was actually pretty hard because I was hyperventilating because I was so much 
like fucking got on cupcake i was pretty happy with my first couple attempts at it but then i just started getting really freaked out and i'd get like near the top because i feel like her greatest flaw is how bad she wants it because it makes her so nervous i went for something it i slipped it, it caught me and then i just started like sobbing on the climb I think it just kind of broke me down emotionally. She got in her head and we had to tell her to take a step back. I talked to Mary and Kaya and Sadie and they were all like, you gotta like take a break. <laughs> Celebrate your wins and like go climbing for fun. It's supposed to be fun. And... Oh, I see why people hate this. <laughs> Life without parole. The V4 boulder invert off with boulder problem. It's hard, it's like hard in off with, with lots of pressing. I like realized when I was getting out onto it, I realized that I actually wanted my feet to be facing the other direction. So I would be there on the climb, holding onto my jug, and I would take my left foot completely out of the crack, turn it, and put it back all the way in. I need the left foot to be facing me, you know? I'm not, I don't want it to be facing backwards. It's a really good climb. Once you get the technique down, it feels very doable. I got my left foot like hooked over that ledge. I was like, I'm safe. She's been amazing and it's been really cool to see her develop those trad skills and put her mind to something because she wants it and, and get it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Girl. Girl. Hell yeah. Good job. Yeah. Nice job. I set my first boulder here and then I came back and everyone was like really proud of me. And I was like, wow, okay, so I've done this boulder, you know, I've done a bunch of five nines. And now I'm thinking like, cupcake don't seem so bad anymore. It's a flared crack and I'm going up into it and, and it's like a, it's an upside down V. And so my hand's like slipping out as I'm going up because I'm below it. Every single time I clip, I'm afraid of falling, and it, it, for me, it feels very slippery, like my hands are very small. And I'm breathing so hard, if Mary asks, like I was breathing really slowly for the beginning part. I'm trying to calm down, I'm like getting my foot on the pebbles, I'm locking my foot in, I just keep hitting it higher, I keep like shoving my elbow in, and then the top is just really not glamorous at all. The top is like just a beach whale and it's just like you're like humping up <laughs> my legs go up actually at the end because i'm just on my knees what just happened i just sank cupcake fuck yeah Finally, ah, like, ah. Okay. it's not about climbing hard it's about being yourself challenging yourself and appreciating and growing i don't want to be that person who's like the voo is significantly sandbagged but maybe like the world is just soft and made of voo if it was correct but when i got up there i was like yes finally finally So I think the way in which Offwit thing has changed since I started is that one, there's a lot more knowledge about it. Um, people understand the techniques a lot better, there's loads more online. I also think it's become way less macho, street brawling, hard man kind of syndrome about the whole thing. Um, there's more women in it, I see a lot more uh, kids, youths trying it as well. It feels to me like a much more open community, which I think is really cool. Spatial was was hard. It was very tricky. I went in it with like a scouting mindset. It has like a 13 R grade and I was a bit nervous for the R rating. I just went into it with like the mindset of try each move individually, figure out where the gear goes and just kind of be very cautious. Got to the anchors and <sighs> that's a bitch. That's a bitch of a route right there. Lowered. Really, really cool route. I think the movement is unique and neat and it was hard so i feel challenged which is fucking awesome the saying i think is really safe takes really good gear the whole way oh yeah i got a six fucking stuck <laughs> this is sad wah, wah, wah. i was nervous my first go for sure and so i just went <laughs> <laughs> Need some hammer. You know what? Fuck it. If somebody wants to like climb this 513 in the day that I'm gonna be resting and like take this six, it's whatever. Nobody did. Imagine that.
It was my second day on it, third overall go, and I was super psyched. Because I had photographed my friend Keisuke on it. I remember watching him do it two years ago. I hope that I can climb that one day. Hell fucking Satan. <laughs> I was psyched. Everything hurts. Yeah, my shoulders hurt. My bicep hurts. My inner right thigh hurts. This shoulder also hurts. There's a goby on my shoulder that hurts. My legs are really tight. There's a goby on each elbow. Like the little tiny like needles were going in the outside. The, my chest hurts, like these muscles. Um, I'm feeling really good. My ribs are sore though. The only thing I got on this week was Whipping Boy. Most people do Whipping Boy left side in. If they have smaller butts, they can stay a little farther into the crack. I cannot, my butt is very big. I cannot stay in the crack. And so I have to like go right side in and I get a better chicken wing with the right. And there's like facey features to grab. For her, honestly, is way harder. It's just a different size and it's super hard for her and she had to come up with some really weird beta make to make it happen that was really strenuous. Eleven C is fucking hard out here. It's not easy. Kaya is the only person I've ever seen and I've filmed a lot of off with climbers and she's the only one that like whips out of off with. She like goes and Falls. She goes until failure, and that's like really inspiring to me. The inside of my sleeve is just like a crusty blood. It's like a scab. It's super disgusting. All right, I'm gonna do it. I took one rest day, I got this. And I tried it and I fell at the hand jam. And then I was like, fuck, okay, I'll do it again the next day. And I did it again the next day and then I fell at the hand jam again. Come on, girl. And then Mary made the excellent point that maybe I know my beta, but I am just too tired. <laughs> so I took three rest days, which was perfect. I needed to take three rest days. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> I'm sleeping. Yeah, goodbye. Sleep. I'm not safe with you. This is my home. <laughs> because then I went up to it first go yesterday morning and I just like walked right up to it and sent it, which was sick. So glad. Sick. I fucking did this. <laughs> How do you feel? Good. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you just do? I just sent Whooping Boy. Yeah. <laughs> watching Kaya come into this awareness that you know she's just as much of a climber as like anybody else she loves this she wants this I've sent everything that I came here to send I had like two projects and I sent both of them I just was kind of nervous going into it But then the pitch itself, I feel like to lead it is super safe. And it didn't really climb like an off width. It just kind of climbed like an awkward crawl. I think someone said this month that she is gunpowder and rusty nails. And I would agree with that. The leader bumps the gear and it's really safe to lead. And you have a really bomber rest on this giant potato. Like you could take a nap up there for like 45 minutes if you wanted to. So it's like a overhanging flare. So if you come out, like you, it's really hard to get back in. The ledge is completely covered in like rat shit and piss. It's just awkward. It's not particularly hard. It's just an awkward climb. And then I just went on my back and just like until um, until like it turned into hand. You do like hand jam, flared hand jam, bone locker hand jam, and then there's a jug. <laughs> I came down all happy that I never had to do it again. Kaya followed it, and I think following it is actually the scary part of it. I had a terrible, terrible, terrible time. She got out of the chimney part and sit on this big potato rest, and she was like, how dare you? There's no more gear for like... <laughs> 
20 feet like if I fall out like there's no way for me to get back in the crack I will have to like essentially lower to the bottom and like lead on top rope this route again Kaya yeah. are you mad at me no. are you are you disappointed we'll talk about this later I was like, I might fall out here. And if I do, there's not an insignificant chance that the rope is gonna shred over the edge here. I'm sorry. <laughs> but then I get to the six that she bumped and it's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess is better than no gear. <laughs> I was having an experience, but you know what? It's done. We never have to go back. I'm not gonna go back anytime soon. I need a break. <laughs> need some space. I, I started rock climbing as a young adult. I was very poor. And then I got loaned a set of rigid stem friends. And those were my first Camelots. And honestly, without that first set, I would not be where I am today. Used clothing, I think, is probably the thing that I buy the most. I've bought articles of clothing from used gear stores and spent hundreds and hundreds of hours like wearing it. On spatial relations, the integral piece that I placed for that climb was actually a three and a half, which they don't make anymore, and I bought it used. I actually bought it off of rerouted. <laughs> Living in it, climbing in it, sleeping in it, waking up the next morning in it, continuing to climb in it, I think it's really, really important. Investing in new companies like rerouted that focuses on trying to like get gear back out there is like important. Buying used gear uh, from places like rerouted can help get you into the outdoors. I came here with this lofty list of goals. When I was telling people about it, they told me that it couldn't be done. Ugh. Hell fucking Satan! Hot girl summer! Pretty much done them all. Having women around you that are supportive and badass and want to do the same things that you want to do and want to support you and you want to support them creates like such a positive feedback loop in rock climbing. I really enjoyed watching her send Big Pink and get to the top and cry about it because like she finally saw how strong she was and how competent she was. My ability to climb hard is directly related to the women that I've been climbing with. It made me cry because I'm like, I've been telling you this the whole time. You're so capable and just as good as the rest of us, even more so in so many other ways. And like, it was cool for her to see that too, you know? The support of your friends is so vital to rock climbing. Like we think that it's this sport that you do alone, but without your friends, you can't send. Like you need a partner to belay you. You need someone to spot you. You need someone to motivate to do the trip with you. Every success I had, my girlfriends would be like, I'm proud of you for this. The friendship is almost as cruxy as the climbing. I know that if I get it, you'll be happy for me. I know that if I don't, you'll be proud that I tried. It's meant a lot to me. It makes me feel like I can rock climb hard if I put my mind to it and if my friends are there with me. If you try hard enough, if you train enough, you can make anything happen if you really want it.